getting into the forte of the summer school. And it's clearly that it's getting more and more difficult. And like we said already with in the beginning, it's like what we try to do is build up the program going from the pathophysiology, the image acquisition, and further on to the modeling, and then towards the applications. And one of the things which is also important is the numerical methods and everything which is associated with that, because in the end, when we want to do modeling, this is very, very important. And it's my great pleasure to have Eugenio Onyate, Onyate here today, who is one of the gurus in numerical modeling. And he's working at the UPC, he's a professor at the UPC here in Barcelona, and he's the founding father of SIMNE, the International Center for Numerical Methods and Engineering. And already, it's now, you said 30 years ago, that Simne started, and already 30 years ago he had a vision that simulations is something which is extremely important in engineering. And not only in biomedicine like we do, but obviously it's a technology which is much, much older, but it's very important for having somebody that has been supporting this kind of technology for years and years. So it's an honor to have you here today and uh, show us a little bit of what you have been doing. Okay, well, thank you for this kind of words and thank you for being here. It's not uh, 7 a.m., but anyhow, it's maybe it's early for some of the participants in the course. Um, this is a, a work that uh, mostly is related to the topic of this seminar. Uh, but I would like to uh, give you a broad and overview of how we approach the solution of problems of interest probably to you in, bio, in biomedicine uh, or in biomechanics, but that have, have many other applications in, in engineering and applied science. And they all have a, a, a particular feature. They combine fluids, solids, and particles. Okay? So you can think fluid as, a, as blood, solid as any component that has a strength and particles as any uh, object of a small or large dimension. And this is the team, uh, Dr. Soda is here in the audience and, and Professor Edelson and some of the uh, other members of the, uh, the, the team in, in Thymne. Now, okay, um, I try to go slowly and, and skip as many details, but not all the details because after all, you want to put your hands on um, codes and program, not only be pilots of uh, users of codes only. So I'm going to tell you how we model uh, um, uh, solids and, and particles using combination of final element and discrete uh, methods. And you can read here, uh, we can formulate, actually we can set up a unified approach for handling these complex problems involving fluids, solids, and, and particles, uh, and, and with applications to uh, a broad number of problems in engineering and, and, and biomedicine. Okay, just a very, um, given the, the extent of the lecture, although already half an hour has almost gone, I would like to recall what, why we are doing all this, because we are want to understand what's going on around us, um, and we are going to use um, these tools that will give us solutions in terms of numbers. Um, in fact, uh, it's, 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 it's interesting that uh, what we uh, are, are trying to model is reality with the help of a mathematical model. And here we start with the first problem, what is reality? Okay. And here we will see that each of us probably has a different sense of what is reality. And for, for that problem, for that reason, any solution that we obtain is already uh, influenced by our vision of reality. For instance, there are many realities, as you know, uh, uh, in the observation of the world. We can go from the uh, subatomic uh, uh, scale to the great uh, numbers in, in continuum for modeling uh, components at the, at the, at the, uh, at the meter scale. So 
for each of these realities, we need appropriate numerical methods. Um, so uh, this is the first thing to um, um, learn is which, is which is our scale of interest. And you have to decide. And then what are you looking for in that scale of interest? This is another important decision because uh, you can get many uh, results that might not be what you're looking for or you might be using the wrong method for the uh, scale that you are looking at. But we are interested in, in, in problems in, in mechanics dealing with objects that deform, like cathedrals or nuclear power plants or historical buildings, or look into the uh, flow of water or air in problems of interest to the uh, automotive industry, to shipbuilding industry, etc. Or manufacturing processes, st still I don't put any bio application here. And all these problems have the f this share the same uh, uh, commonality that they are all uh, looking for answers to s uh, questions like uh, how big, how much, uh, when the structure will fail, uh, how much noise are we getting, and how efficient is the manufacturing method. And for that, I think this is why we use numerical methods. We are going to combine technical knowledge. We need to know what we are talking about, and I'm not going to talk too much about things that I don't know today, like, uh, for instance, biomedicine. I try to talk about things that I know more. Uh, and then you have to use knowledge of mathematics and computer science to quantify the solution to these problems. Also, this is a, a very important sentence. We have to be uh, modest and not really be tied up to any numerical method. You know? uh, we are all, all the time trying to really marry, uh, or bring together methods, uh, because we know that, that all, that's not such a perfect numerical method. This is in a statement from George Box, which is an economist. He was referring to models in economy, but I think I, I took this sentence and, and, and actually I adapted. Um, and so the usefulness of the method is what counts, if they are useful. <coughs> and also this is 30 years after Thymne was created, this is how we present our work. We are only part of a, of a system where we uh, actually worry about a node here in the system, which is the predictive node, computations. And the two other nodes is what we, the devices, experiments, and knowledge, data. And this is with these three systems together will help us to get a better product or to solve a particular problem. And you can see, you can see that they are all connected. They are all connected. So society, don't worry too much about each of these independent nodes. They want to solve a problem. And this is particularly relevant in, in, bio, in biomechanics and biomedicine. And you know that we can model systems very simply. Uh, we've seen um, um, simplified models like networks, and this is done to model um, the uh, blood flow in the human body or structures or networks of gas or electricity. This is, this is what we uh, will call a uh, uh, discrete system. Uh, but in, in general, we are worried about what we will call continuum systems. Continuum, this is an example of a continuum system. And we're going to use discretized method, and you are all familiar with this, the concept of discretization. It's going to, to the infinite numbers of degrees of freedom of the problem to a finite number of degrees of freedom through a discretization. And the most common method is finite elements, but this is one of the many methods, finite volumes, finite differences, you can use many methods. And in fact, this method is not new. It was used by Archimedes, the concept, to compute the, uh, the, uh, the ratio between the, the, the length of the circumference to the diameter, as you see, by discretizing the, the, the circumference. And you can see that by using uh, polygons of a, a larger number of nodes, he was able to quantify an unknown, an unknown, which is pi, is, eh, is, um, um, and using, uh, using upper and lower bounds, depending on if it is uh, circumscribing or inscribing the polygon. Okay, so this is the essence of what we're doing with the discretization method. And it had to pass something like 600 years until someone else actually brought uh, from China, uh, extended the concept of discretization to areas. And, and he was able to bound pi using the same concept of dividing the continuum, dividing the unknown domain 
excuse me, divided into domain where we want to compute the unknown in, in, in subdomains where we can compute uh, areas or to some lengths. So now we know what we're going to do. We're going to discretize our body of interest and this is applied extensively in, 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 in all the problems that we solve every day, in structures, in the manufacturing industry, you, what we see and what actually, uh, believe me, what our uh, society, let's say our customers, they don't want to see is meshes. But what we are using is meshes behind the objects of interest. You can see representation of, of, of meshes here. Uh, and, 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 and I bring here this example because we are next to the Akbak Tower and, and, and I brought this case of analysis of how we use uh, final elements to discretize the tower and to model the deformation of the tower. And it's this, this particular tower, I don't know if you know, that uh, it, it, it is all sustained by the walls, by the external walls, okay? And what we are looking at is the stresses in the walls and inside is, uh, is only the core for the elevators and, and, the, and the floors, okay? So this is an example of a very, I would say, uh, um, um, a very interesting building just at about 200 meters from this, from this room. Um, and the same has been analyzed, uh, and this is, I use the word pathology all the time to model how structures will behave until they fail, until they die. I use these concepts. So we take a, a, a structure like a cathedral, and for instance, here you will see that we actually increase the load until it fails, and then it collapses. So this concept of a structural pathology um, it has many similarities to what we do when we want to analyze the strength of bones or uh, prothesis, etc. Okay? So numerical methods are used here to see how structures behave in the, I would say, healthy uh, status when there are no uh, damage, like here, or to see how uh, much they will live. For instance, now we are studying a theme the life of the three nuclear power plants in, 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 in Catalonia, ASCO 1, ASCO 2, and Valdeyos. The question is, how much life do they have so that they can have or not permission to function? Okay, so here is a heart. This is the first. Yeah? And, 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 and everything that I have said, this is uh, some San Ma San Marx uh, Chapel in Venice. Uh, the, the everything I have said for, for uh, this variety of structures applies when we want to see how um, um, will uh, this uh, human uh, um, this uh, uh, component behaves. But you see, this goes beyond our imagination. Uh, Lancome actually ad uh, advertises the, this, uh, this, uh, uh, this uh, product eh? uh, in terms of the, the, the good features it has in the, on the skin. Eh? Uh, and they say that they use final elements to model the behavior of this uh, cream on the, on the skin, you see? So uh, but, uh, this is not so much new. This is almost 10 years old, okay? But uh, I thought it was appropriate to bring it here. So, okay, we have here reality. We have our models. We have our computational method. Again, each reality will have a model, a structure, and then we have results. And what we need is to make sure that we know how this behaves, and this is how we need invariably, and this will always be like that, we need a reference from experiments. And the experiments link, link directly with reality. So when we compare our results with experiments from uh, reality, then we know that our model and our perception of reality is good. But if we use analytical solutions, eh, analytical solutions to compare our results, these analytical solutions are already polluted by our model. Okay, so this is an important concept. Yeah? It's the difference between validation and verification. So you said reality I model with a mo reality I, I, I model with a particular differential equation. I obtain a solution and I compare, maybe our differential equation is wrong. If I compare with experiments, then I know that my model and the method is, is correct. I thought I brought this here because this is very relevant. And this is it's very subtle, but ask any of your colleagues if they know the difference between verification and validation, and this is not so well known. But how about other methods that are really increasingly popular? There is a conference that we run, there is a journal that we run on particular methods. And I would like to bring this because after all, the, this, is, this lecture goes about particles. So there are methods that are based on modeling a continuum as a collection of particles, 
or they model a collection of particles used by the individual particles. So these are perceived as discretization methods or to model a real a collection of particles. And these are very simple because using only the interactions through the contacts and applying Newton law, sum of forces equal mass time acceleration or torque equal inertia times the vertic um, an angular uh, acceleration. In integrating these equations, I will come back to this uh, fast later, and they, they can model a very, uh, very uh, a variety of problems. This is only some examples. Okay. And you will be surprised of the number of applications in pharmacy, in mining industry, in food industry, in chemical engineering, in civil engineering, and in biomechanics that involve uh, uh, particles like this and methods like this. For instance, this is, these were, in the previous example, these were non-cohesive particles. And his is soil model as a collection of particles, which is excavated. Eh? So this is uh, another application of interest. Okay, but then we are talking about fluids and particles. So we are going to put this, all these particles in a fluid. And we need to know what we are doing with fluids because Again, what do we mean by fluids? It's air, it's water, it's bentonite. Um, so here I would like to just to tell you that we, we have methods that deal with flows within cavities. This will be blood flow. This is what we call internal flows or flow within this room and flows with the free surface. There is a big difference between uh, uh, each of these methods. And we could talk about Eulerian and Lagrangian methods they are more appropriate for one or each other application. For instance, I can see that for airplanes, where we have this concept of the, the virtual wind tunnel, also for, for, for cars, and, and, and for, for telescopes, this will be what we will call uh, uh, internal flows, because we are going to put the object in a, cab in a cage, and we're going to analyze how the air will flow through this. However, we have, if we have, um, a, a, a landslide or a, a ship cruising on, on waters, then we, this is what we will call external flows because we are going. So here we have what we would like to, to call the, 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 wind, the virtual wind tunnel, which is a, a domain where we will put a car and we will let the, 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 the air flow through the tunnel. We will need to actually manipulate the geometry, this is complex, and to actually generate a mesh and, and, and we, have, we have to clean uh, all the details in the car, and then we have to put the car in, in, in the domain and with an, a mesh which is fine enough to capture all the details around the car. And this is not a fine mesh, but we, we could not afford a, a, a finer mesh. This was done some years ago by a final a, a master student from Imperial College. Um, and, and this is the objective here is to compute nice pictures like these ones, but after that, what we want to compute is the drag, the resistance of the car in the wind. So I just wanted to bring the attention to this concept of the virtual wind tunnel, that which is in the line of what we call virtual labs. You have a, a virtual lab to see how a structure will deform, a virtual wind tunnel to see how a car or an airplane will flow, and we have also the concept of, um, the concept of, um, of the virtual towing tank. What is a towing tank? A towing tank is a domain like this. Again, it's a domain. I introduced in this concept of virtual lab now. It's a domain when you put your model of your, of your actual ship, scale one over 40, and you tow it and see the resistance. And then you have to assume that there will be waves in the sea. Okay? And this is a, an animation of how a, a mesh is generated with the ship inside. This is our virtual towing tank. There is one in Madrid, one kilometer long. You have to tow it. The, the, the longest one is in, in Washington, in, in, in the David Taylor. You see the mesh is created around the object. This is an American Cup ship. Okay, this is only a conceptual example to see, to, 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 um, to, so that you understand what is a, a, virtual, a, virtual, uh, a virtual wind tunnel, a virtual, um, Okay, so this is an American cup. I don't have the, I don't, I don't want to, to stop here, but you can see the details of, of how the mesh is, is refined uh, uh, next to the body. I will go, I, I will go uh, further faster. I don't want to, and this is uh, supposed to go on. Yes, visualization is very important. 
please translate all these cases into your problem of interest in, in biomechanics. I will reach biomechanics, but uh, before that, we had to really master this uh, more, I would say, um, like practical problems of in engineering. Um, and so, it's, it's okay, so, and, 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 but don't forget, after, after that, what we want is numbers. We want to compute the wave elevation to compute the drag force, we want to compute the drag force, the resistance of the force. The number of interest is what is the resistance of the car in the air, what is the resistance of the shipping waves, and if you fail to capture this uh, wavy uh, solution, which is very difficult to obtain, the numbers that you will get will be useless. With nice colors, nice pictures, but the scale of interest, the ship, number of interest, um, 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 the, the resistance. Let's go into more complex problems. And like this, tsunami flows, you know, uh, or flows that have waves or flows moving in a kind of a turbulence with a free surface. And then put particles there. And what is a particle? A particle is a colloid. A particle is a cow or a car. So we are going to talk about this. Um, very small particles, small and large. Okay, you could say micro, macro, and large, but micro and macro, I, um, well, very small, small, and large. And, uh, and this is an example of a tremendous uh, particulate flow. Here you have cars and, 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 and even ships flowing very large with very small particles. Here you have um, particles which are large and particles contained within these containers, which is like a, like a, like a mineral uh, ore or, or grain. Uh, you can have here 250 tons blocks that are wiped away during the overnight by, by waves, so they get large particles. And here we have the latest project that we, we are carrying. We have particles of, uh, of, of, the, um, of ice eh, that, uh, that uh, a model uh, with discrete elements mm, in, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a liquid, which is the sea, uh, excuse me, Oof. which is the sea, and uh, they have buoyancy. Many problems of interest in geomechanics, but here you see this could be an ateroma plaque, or this could be a, 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 you know, a, a, a human, uh, I don't remember the name, yeah, blood, it's called, um, um, I will, it will come back later. Uh, that is, that it is uh, eroded by the, the effect of the fluid. And this is very typical in, in, in civil engineering. You have a dam, you have overtopping flow, and the, y, and the, and the dam, this happened in Valencia in 1982. This disappears and this creates a tremendous collapse. I will put examples of this problem related to, uh, to, the, to the blood flow later. In excavation problems, there are many problems of this type. And here, this is not an artery. This is a six kilometers pipe of 20 centimeters diameter, where inside we have bentonite, which is this kind of non-Newtonian fluid, transporting the particles that are drilled at the end. Okay, so this is a problem that we are solving. Eh? Um, and we are actually using this technology to model blood flow, of course. Here is blood flow, okay? And here is blood flow, and uh, finally, very simple problem of uh, blood flow. Transporting particles inside. Transporting particles, yes, finally. So let's talk a little bit about how we do this. Right, I, I, I have seen there is a lecture later on Ilegar and Lagrange, and I don't know if you are familiar with this, but this is actually, it's a test for what we know about fluid mechanics. Um, let's, no let's not go further if we don't understand this clearly. When we talk about Eulerian description, is when we are looking to, this, to, this, to the river, we, we have a fixed domain and the flow passes, okay? Passes to the domain. When we talk about Lagrangian, I am a Lagrangian object. I, I, am, I, I travel with, um, and I carry my coordinate system. Particles are always Lagrangian, okay? Because we follow the particles. The fluid could be Eulerian or Lagrangian. This is clear. 
But the particles will be always Lagrangian. Okay, first, you could have a combination of both methods, but we don't talk about that. So we, are, we have methods. In fact, the difference in mathematics is that when you have a fixed control volume, you have, in the definition of the acceleration, you have the convective derivative. U is the, the velocity. And this term is nonlinear, you see? Velocity times gradient of velocity. And this is the term that is very difficult to model in fluid mechanics, using a Eulerian description. You have a Eulerian description. You put particles. OK, we'll see in a minute. And you have problems with this term. In Lagrangian description, you don't have this term. It's simpler. But you need to update the, co the domain. The flow particles will move. You have to follow them. Okay, This is very important. Can we write a code that deals with the two problems at the same time? Yes, we can. We have done it. And this is what we call unify Eulerian Lagrangian formulation. Now, another terminology that is extremely confusing, believe me, we run a conference. This is the seventh edition on particle methods. The next one is in Hanover. And here people come and talk about particle method. What is a particle method? OK. Particles are real. I mean, are uh, colloids or uh, sand or, or, uh, bl or uh, blood particles? Um, uh, well, or not? Well, many methods are called particle method, and they, in fact, they are used to discretize a continuum. So they don't use real particles. For instance, in these methods, you have methods in which particles, they don't have mass. SPH, you are going to talk about, uh, hear about SPH later on, is a discretization method that has, uh, that uses no meshes, but is the, the concept of particle in P, a smooth particle dynamic, is to discretize a continuum. And even the particles can have mass, like in, in DM and or the material point method. But the objective here is not to uh, analyze physical particles, but to discretize a continuum. For instance, you discretize a domain to analyze fluid flow using a particle method. Otherwise, you, the particle method, like the discrete element method, can be used to model physical particles, granular matter or individual portions of a continuum. So the DDM here is in the two sides. You can use it to discretize a continuum, like a concrete block, or you can use it to model millions of particles flowing in the fluid. Okay? This is confusing, very confusing. For instance, the particle Farad element method, it is the method that we use to solve fluid. On top of that, we put discrete element method that we use to model the particles. Here, here are the Lagrangian particles, you see, uh, in red plus a Lagrangian uh, solid. <laughs> Confusing? No. You have objects here that will move in the fluid. They will fall down. And we are also going to track the fluid nodes in blue. Blue are fluid nodes. They are going to move. And inside this mesh, we are going to have millions of particles that are going to move with the fluid. Okay? This is what we use to model the tsunami, for instance. You will see examples. Okay? This is what we call Lagrangian particulate fluid. It's a Lagrangian fluid with particles linked to a solid, and solids are always Lagrangian. Solid particles are always Lagrangian. In, in a structural mechanics, we never talk about Eulerian or Lagrangian. My students, they don't even know what I'm talking about. It's only when you talk to the fluid community that you uh, uh, really um, start the debate. OK? I'll skip this. Embedded formulation, I'll skip this. It's too technical. This uh, is interesting, but. Now let's talk about the discrete element method, because you can make your living only with this method, not even knowing about fluids or solids. I have seen these communities. So what are, why is it very appealing? Because it's very simple. It's very simple and very effective. We have a code that you can use, actually. Okay? It's very effective. For the mining industry, for instance, here you have particles and they move. And what is what you need to get a, a, an accurate solution? Well, what you need is to model the, the contact between the, uh, this is a project that we have with a company called uh, Metallogenia. They want to see the efficiency of these loading machines and the wear in these cutting tools. Well, these uh, particles, this is used in pharmacy. There are many applications. I will skip this. These mixers. This 
applications in pharmacy, all the applications in pharmacy involve, involve discrete element methods. For instance, the fracture of a pill. Okay. Nice. Or the or coating of particles. You put particles, on, you mix them. We don't have time to, to see all this. Probably, but you see, you put them around, so you see. Then you can have a fluid inside. But at the same time, you, you might have a, 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 a cohesive a part of the, like an ateroma plaque. And you want to say, I want to break this cohesive solid, like a, this specimen, load it until it fails, and you can use DEM to model that. DEM used here as a discretization method. And what is the only thing that matters in the DEM? To model the interaction between a particle and the neighbors. A part, an interaction which is in the normal direction, and you have a spring plus a damper, and in the tangential direction, you have a spring plus a damper. That's all. That's all, well, but you have to calibrate these parameters. So the accuracy of a discrete element method comes in the calibration of these parameters. So you have forces in the normal and tangential directions. You have to relate these forces to the, the the, the, the stresses, so you have very simple equations in mechanics. This is, this is a strength of materials of the, first, of the first year. And you reach equation like that force in the normal direction related to the displacements and the velocities um, of the uh, relative velocities between the interacting particles. And you have coefficients that depend on the elasticity modulus of the actual material. So this is the, 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 the value that you obtain in experiments, and with it you, you obtain the microparameters. But how about, but you might ask, but this is for, for cohesive particles. Yes, this is true. If the particles are non-cohesive, you only need to worry about the tangential direction. Tangential directions, and you obtain the relationship between the tangential stresses and the uh, forces and the displacements, uh, which is the friction. Right. Failure, you can, you can, have, you can have failure criteria. And because after all, what you want is to break this pill you load it, you, come, you obtain force until it breaks, and you, see, you want to see maybe the strength of this pill, aspirin, or is a concrete or cement, and for that you need to really account for fracture, for failure loads, very simple failure loads. There are papers published on this. This is ice, for instance. Ice. You take an ice, an ice, an ice, uh, um, an ice block, you load it, you break the cohesion between the particles, and it breaks. And then there are experiments that give you the failure load, and we compute, uh, we, we compare. So I recall we have a method that models discrete particles, each of them individually or in groups, and the friction between them. This is for non-cohesive material like grain, ballast, or many other applications. And we have cohesive particles that also that have cohesive loads that break, and they are useful. Uh, to a model. For instance, this is an example of how we will break or we will test. This is for the food industry. This, these particles will break. Interesting. This is another problem. You, you have particles falling, a rock, on a net. And this net is also modeled with particles. Interesting. This is, this is, uh, this is a curiosity. Now we know how to model particles, cohesive and non-cohesive. We know how to break them. Now we're going to put them in the fluid. We put them in the fluid. So if we, the particles are very large, like if I model myself with and falling into water, I might use finite elements to model the large particles. If the particles are very not to, no, smaller, I use the discrete element method. Okay? For instance, this is cereals within a cup of milk. And this is always strongly criticized in the UK because they always tell me that nobody puts the milk and then the cereals. It's not the other way around. <laughs> okay, right? So, eh? but you can see here how nice it looks. Uh, and, and the particles are modeled with DEM and the fluid, the milk, with the. the. Uh, so these large particles move following Newton law. I already talked about it. Okay. So all we need is to compute the forces of the fluid on the particles. And we have here interacting domains, uh, and, and then we will move the particles. Mm -hmm. 
This is a particle falling in a, in a tube. It could be a vessel. But here you have, you see a problem. Do we fall, do, do we, the mesh will follow the deformation? Nice results are always guarantee. Analytical results exist for this problem. So, so uh, you can see that moving the mesh is very complex. It's complex, but it's part of the problem when we want to model, uh, we will have high fidelity uh, modeling of a large particle moving in, in water. Let's talk about this unified formulation. Perhaps I, I will only tell you, I put uh, some equation, but that you can model Eulerian and Lagrangian with a single uh, mathematical setting. This is what we are talking about, uh, but I will skip that. And perhaps this is, it was new to us, now it's very familiar, perhaps it's, new, it's, it's, it's not so, so much well known for you. You know the equations of fluid mechanics, momentum equation, you see? This is the generalized form, Eulerian with the convective terms, Lagrangian without the convective terms. So acceleration, the sum of forces, the forces is the forces due to the internal stresses plus the, external, the body forces. So these are the standard equations this equals zero is the standard equations in mechanics, in fluids and solids. Sum of forces equals zero. Uh, or sum of forces, including the acceleration, equals zero. Now, if you put particles inside the fluid, we use what we call the embedded approach. The particles are put in a, uh, inside the fluid. They occupy a certain space. And they reduce the fraction of available fluid here. You see, if this is zero, that means that this is all occupied by particles. If this is one, this means there are no particles. And the effect is put here in the fluid equation. So this is the force particle to fluid that is perceived by the fluid due to the particles embedded. So this is the general concept. You put the particles, the particles occupy a space, and they have an effect on the momentum equation. Great. Well, this is so simple. Yes, it's so simple. And the same in the mass balance, because you have less fluid in the, in the, in the, in the differential domain here. You have less fluid. It's reduced by the particles. So you have to account this in the, in the mass conservation equation. And this is also in red the terms that appear when there are particles inside the fluid. Good. If there are no particles, we have the standard equations, momentum and mass balance. Great. This is the compressibility of the fluid. So now we know how to include the particles. Now let's look to the particles. We know that the, the fluid see the particles. In the particles, see the fluid, because in the forces that govern the motion of the particles, we have the weight, we have the contact forces, and this force here that comes from this term. So now we know how to model particles within the fluid. The fluid will see the effect of the particles, and the particle will see the effect of the fluid. Some details, but very simple. It's a repetition. Mass times acceleration equal forces. What are the forces that the particles see? The weight, the contact in the normal and the tangential direction, and the fluid forces, which is the Archimedes force, the buoyancy force, the Archimedes, plus the drag. And the drag is very difficult to compute analytically. Excuse me, the drag is very uh, difficult to compute numerically because you will have to do real uh, fidelity simulation to compute the boundary layers, blah, blah, blah. But there are many analytical solutions for simple shapes in fluids. So we took drag forces from the aerodynamic literature, hmm, and we applied this analytical drag to the particle. Great. So now we can give this to uh, any of you or any of our students to program, because now we know, we know all the details. And the details, we don't need to understand now, but, but please make sure that all the details are well documented. Otherwise, you cannot actually go further. Right. Uh, I will skip this, because, uh, and I will skip this. After that, you need to put this in the, in the, in the, in the, in the, uh, uh, Differential equations, you have to ap apply, for instance, in finite elements, uh, you have to have a variational form eh, for the momentum and for the mass volume equation. 
And then you have to discretize. This is before discretization. And then, and then we use always, in this case, a mixed formulation. What does it mean, a mixed formulation? Our variables are velocities and pressure in the fluid. Hey, also in the solid. This formulation includes Lagrangian. How about if this domain includes a solid and not a fluid? It's the same. So we can model a solid falling in a fluid. The solid is Lagrangian, and the fluid is whatever we want, Eulerian or Lagrangian. So this is not only a general formulation for fluids and particles, it's for a continuum in particles. This is very nice. We like to unify. Eh? We, we, we dream. It's like, it's like Pythagoras. He wanted to govern the world with numbers. And, and so we, we, not, we are more modest. We will not attempt that. But we want a unified formulation. There is a penalty, a little penalty. In, in solids, you have an elastic solid. You use displacements as, as variables. Here, we use velocities and pressure. But do we need pressures? No, you don't need pressure because you can eliminate pressure in a, in a, in a, in a solid. But we use pressures and velocities. Yeah. So we use the same variables, velocities and pressures, in the fluid and in the solid. And there is a thesis, Alessandro Franchi, that recently has finished, and, uh, and, um, which is all this is explained in detail. And the equations is this is momentum equation, this is the acceleration terms, this is the term including the the, 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 the viscosities and the pressure term, and the, this is the, the mass conservation, where we have here the particle forces, here and here also the particle forces. This is all for a, this is the, the end of the equation, but I think it's good. I think you got the message a little bit. So we have, we move the particles, we solve for the fluid and the solid, and then for Lagrangian flows, we, we move the mesh. So let me tell you which kind of Lagrangian flow we use, because this is very powerful. We believe more powerful than any other method. And there are no equations after this. Eh? It's called particle finite element method, PFM. And this is explained in, in, a, in, in a graphical picture. Let's look at this as a cloud of particles. And here, particles refer to material points. They are used to discretize. So this blue will be water or air. This red will be another fluid, or it will be a solid, maybe a ship. This cloud has some fixed points. So this is what we call cloud at time n. Then we press a button, and by using computational geometry tools, you can download it from the web. This is used in design, in, in design uh, of uh, clothes or design of cars. You can recover the domain, the boundaries of the domain. There is a method called alpha shape that will give you this, this. Of course, the quality of this boundary will depend on the number of particles. But cloud to domain. To solve a differential equation, you need a domain of analysis because you need boundary condition. OK? Yeah. Don't forget also this, uh, the famous story that God <coughs> created the differential equations and the, boundary, and the devil the, created the boundary conditions. Yeah. So the boundary conditions, eh, for that, you need to a domain to apply this devil uh, uh, you know, curse uh, conditions. And, for, and then I like finite volumes. I like finite differences. I like maybe uh, SPH. OK, any method you are used to solve your differential equations here. I love finite elements. No, I don't, because we, but we have. 35 years of experience in final elements. So we press a button, and then we get generate the mesh. And then we, this mesh inherits the properties of these points here. And you can see here we have a flying particle here and a flying subdomain. Then we solve the equations. Then we move the nodes, because we are Lagrangian. We move. You see? We have move here. We have move. And then we repeat. Oh, we move, and we throw the mesh to the basket. We throw it. We don't want the mesh. Here it is. Then we go back. Cloud, domain, domain, mesh, mesh, cloud. Cloud, domain, domain, mesh, mesh, cloud. So simple. Yes. For instance, a body that is eroded inside the human body under forces due to fluid. Cloud, domain, domain, mesh. After some time, maybe this is a polymer. This is rock cutting. I could have put here another name. You see? How 
this method gives me an extremely powerful to do things like this. This was done almost 15 years ago, I think, or maybe not, 11, 2004. Oh, okay. And this is what nobody wants to see, the mesh. Okay, the mesh. This is, this is slow in this case, but anyway. This is better. You see? Very difficult problem. But very f and then we, we don't show to people the mesh. And this is the method. At each time step, we have two new uh, duties that in finite elements or in normal numerical method you don't have. We need to redefine the domain at each time step, and we need to redefine the mesh. 20 years ago, remeshing at each time step, it was a burden. Now it is not, because they are very fast mesh generators. You can re regenerate in parallel. So that, and, and you get a lot of freedom. A lot of freedom. Let me let put this, this example. This was also an academic example. You see? Th there are experiments for this case. And th you see here, this is very nice. This node, you see this is runs, and automatically it is captured by the wall. The method, because it has this geometrical tool, prevents the nodes from leaving the domain. And, and so it's extremely powerful. Also, allow us to see the contact of the fluid with the with the with boundaries and also the, the, the contact between objects through this green interface. Excuse me. How? You have a solid falling or a fluid, like in the previous case, approaching the boundary. And through the mesh, we identify that we are close to the boundary. And here we apply to these elements some contact forces in the vertical and, and tangential direction. And we can model contact in this manner, and you say, oh, this, is this accurate? Well, as much as you want to pay, as much as you want to pay for this contact interface, this is not very accurate. Enough, because what we are interested <coughs> is in see how these tetrapods will fall into water. So these are all ingredients, so very powerful ingredients to solve problems a la carte. Let's say what problems we would like to solve. Okay, I'm academic problems, and let's see how we are doing. Okay. Uh, um, this is another case. There are many, many uh, academic uh, examples that one can solve. You can do experiments yourself. Uh, you can uh, see the, the, you know, compare Lagrangian fluid, Lagrangian solid, individual particle. This is the case. How about many particles? Well, for that, first we start with one. And we throw a particle embedded in the fluid. And you go back. Particles now embedded. I already explained. The fluid see the particles. The particles see the fluid. Yes, this is the case. I will go further. We have the velocity. We, we have an experimental value for that. And we have here a collection of particles falling. You see? Embedded. Great. 3D, and we start playing, not playing, applying. This is, this is air bubbles interacting with physical particles. And some particles are dragged, you see, by the air to the top. This is the famous example in chemical engineering. Yeah. A fluidized bed. You see? Particles flowing. Pil oh, but these are very dense collection of particles. Still they are embedded. Still they are embedded. So here, maybe the fluid coefficient ratio that I explained, maybe it's close to 1, maybe 0 0.8. But still it's embedded. It works. And this is a very interesting part to see how, and this is very interesting for the human application. You will see. You see water, blood, hitting a surface and eroding the surface and then transporting but when the fluid forces exceed a certain amount, this is used from abrasive wear, then this part of the domain is transported inside a fluid. A jet hitting here, and is, you see, is creating particles. Now we are creating particles, transporting the particles, and they fall here, you see how they fall, and then they accumulate. Interesting. 
many applications. This is the Valencia case, the mini, the mini toes, we call it. All these particles have been dragged. We don't collect them. Then here, this is another case. Fluid passing, and here, these particles have been dragged. So now we can drag particles. We can erode collection of particles with cohesion. OK, so we, we can do many problems. And I'm sure you are thinking of your personal problem that you would like to solve. Oh, I have to skip this. This is a, a large particle, <laughs> a, a lorry, Lagrangian fluid. The question is 20 tons lorry in a real wave. The, you see, it's very dangerous eh, to drive when you are next to a storm, next to the harbor. This is, this is an, a submarine landslide. We have a project now on this case. This is, this is a wave, this is a wave, this is an academic case. Uh, oh yes, sorry. There is a wave here coming, eroding, when the friction exceeds a certain value, you will see, and this is a lorry, which is there quietly standing, but you see this is eroding, and then after some time, it falls down. And particles here will ac accumulate. Um, well, you see, creating particles and affecting what is around. Well, the landslide. I I, I skipped that one. This is the Lituya landslide, the falling into the into the reservoir, creating a wave. Let Let me talk about this. Um, this is the the tsunami. Uh, we are. This was an advanced grant project of DC. Small and large particles together being mixed. In this case, they are combined. So this is when we are tra being trained. Now we, we master or we can handle very small particles uh, together with large particles. And still, we will not break this wall. We would like to break it. We are going to break it. We have a project with our colleagues in Japan. Of course, they're investing a lot of money in this. And we hopefully, with these methods, we, uh, we will solve cases that are of, of their interest. Oh, we, this, is a, this is validation case that we did in, to see the effect of the, the particles. Too slow, anyway. Now, let's keep this. But this is of interest, dredging, but this has many applications also in medicine. You suction from a cohesive part and take it to another. See? This is the vessel problem that I mentioned to you. We would like to erode and transport these particles. Transport these particles, I'll skip this. And this is a, an example they say, of a jet on a cohesive soil oh, wait a minute. that will break the soil and will transport the particles. And the particles are collected here. So these are very simple tests that are being used to see if the method works. OK? This is what's done. And of course, these particles are transported in different fluids. Okay, this is 3D, of course. Eh? That's about in different fluids. And we, if the fluid is water, water, the fluid goes much faster than the particles. You see, when the fluid goes to 0.25 meters per second, the particles go very slow, less than 0 0.02. But if the fluid is blood, or let's say bentonite, in this case, mud, the particles and the fluid go to the same speed. This is why. Uh, dense fluids are used to transport particles in the oil industry. Very good uh, conclusion. Um, okay, I'm almost finishing with these applications of your interest, of course. More close to your interests. But now we can model problems like these ones. This one is particles falling, hitting the top of the, no, the, the tip of the drill. Particles flowing in a in a in a multiphase uh, in a, a fluid. When we have 
We will see an application of this in the, in the vascular device in a minute. You see, very high fidelity simulations. This is the PFEM. Well, this is also two fluids, particles flowing. This is what is called oil recovery. You, you push water inside the soil to push the oil out of the soil. This is, and this is the case here. You have an oil mass, and as water flows, this oil is recovered. This oil will go to an adjacent soil. This is called, uh, and here you see Eulerian fluid. We know what it means. Yes, the fluid is Eulerian because this is a fixed domain. So we don't abandon Eulerian, no, not at all. If there is not a free surface, we use Eulerian fluid. Finally, I have 10, 12 slides where you will see similar applications as I have explained into the uh, um, cardiovascular uh, sector and the upper airways uh, sector. You see, so this is uh, some the, the, the tip problems where these methods can, can be applied. This is more uh, familiar to you, but let me, this is, some of these are our results and some of these I, I have taken, I have borrowed from other colleagues. This is the human airways. And this is the case you might, you probably know. And I have to tell you that this is a very simple case from what I, we have seen. Okay, so we, we inject particles eh, according to the breathing uh, uh, um, process, and we see the uh, different the properties of the particles that are retained or not. I will see, uh, I will cover more on the next example. This, I think, we have solved. Here you inject particles, and some particles are retained due to some friction conditions, okay? Again, this is in the upper airways. So, so here is the effect of breathing. And this is very important. You can see for aerosol design, uh, anything to do with tobacco and other uh, applications that I'm sure I don't like to, I wouldn't like to comment because you are more expert. And, and I have Eduardo here, he can comment here. This is the similar case. I think one of those we have solved in our code and the other we, we didn't. This is not our result. This is in Karlsruhe. It's interesting what they say here. You say, oh my God. They talk about the human nose. It's a complex organ, blah, blah, blah. So they are, the objective of this study was to uh, learn about uh, how and where particles spread and deposit in the human nasal cavity. This is the objective. Fine. So now we have methods that can be applied uh, to this problem. I will go a little bit further. So very. This is the geometrical aspects. And at the end, I will have to say that not relatively simple applications of flow, air flow, again with particles, and they check where the particles uh, um, deposit. Uh, and, and, and I cannot comment on, 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 on the outcome because this is not something that we, we have done, but I just wanted to uh, bring you this direct application of, of the method. Tracers in, in a nasal channel. You see? Same problem. This is all related to air flow with particles. They check the velocities. This is what? Now we go to blood flow. Blood flow is much more, um, much more common. Here particles are large, they're embedded again. We have embedded the particles and they, they check different, different uh, 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 aspects related to the, uh, to the properties of blood flow. I'm not an expert in blood flow, so I just wanted to give you, interesting to see here, 
the small and large particles uh, traveling together in that application. Let me go to the another case here. And these are deformable particles. We could deform them as well, yes. Uh, embedded. This, they are all using the embedded approach. I mean, the particles are on top of the fluid mesh. The mesh here is Eulerian, I'm sure. If it is closed cavity, mesh is most of the time Eulerian because there's no free surface. And then we, we follow this trend of applying the forces to the fluid and to the particles. Another case here of well, you see, <laughs> hybrid method. This is interesting because hybrid methods, like we have used finite elements, PFM and particles, they use lattice Boltzmann and finite elements. I don't have time to comment on that particular mixture of methods but it's similar to what we're doing. And they check on different uh, values of the hematocrit. They get the, the, this is the good one, and they disregard the other. So they, well, they use these simulation tools to get, um, to get their, their, the results of interest. I come back to the same concept. Scale of interest and results of interest. So this is, okay, this is uh, what we get. Another case here. These applications you can borrow. I, I'm sure they, they, you can have this presentation. I will leave with the organizers. You can. This is ventricular flow. Okay, so uh, this. Uh, particular case and I, 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 I'm, I don't know what was the objective of this study but combine again the deformable uh, wall of the, uh, of the ventricle with modeling of particles inside. Another case of this is again going to the to the upper airways so this is a very simple conceptual geometry particles moving up and down. This is interesting this is what I, I mentioned about particles trying to make progress through this lattice. Okay. And some pass and some others don't pass. Any of these problems we could solve. I just put them here as an example. This is uh, interesting of uh, plaquetas, platelet aggregation. Here, you will have here the accumulation of red, uh, in fact, red blood cells, yes, is this a, the plaquette, they are also in red here. Ugh. Uh, at the end, they get this, agglom this uh, agglomeration of formation, in this case, of this, uh, of this uh, cohesive uh, platelet. Another case here, particles, the diameter of the particles is color, the bigger in red, the smaller one in blue, and this is another study for whatever purpose. Well, time is passing, let me just, this case we have solved in Thimne. We have a cloth here, we are going to have blood flowing and we are going to use the same erosion method that I have explained for the, for the riverbed to model how this as blood coming is eroding, you see? And then it travels for whatever purpose, interesting. I think you can see the interest of this clearly, I will not make any more comments. Another case, this is a, another cloth here. We have flow, fluid passing. At, we don't plot the fluid, and then it, it moves. Some of it is uh, fully uh, dislocated, but some goes in, 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 in blocks. Okay, this is an example from a commercial 
than the particles eh, within on the, on the valve. There are not so many actually, I haven't found many more. And I, and I look for many. So the conclusion, don't read it. I will just tell you in words. You can model the fluid with a Lagrangian or a Eulerian frame. You use a Lagrangian frame, it's more adequate. The Lagrangian frame for the fluid is more adequate when you have free, free surfaces. So maybe in some applications in, in, in biomechanics. Otherwise, on top of the Eulerian or Lagrangian fluid, you have to put particles that are Lagrangian or solids that are Lagrangian too. Okay, so that's the conclusion. The method that we use for, to model the, the fluid is the particle fundamental method. And all this is in a free and open source code that you are welcome to use it. Okay, this is our repository of computational knowledge in Thibne. Okay, so all this there is an open source. And open source means that you can actually look at it. That it's hard, you know. It's like a, it's it's like a, the, also the, the British Library is in open source, but you have to study it. Or, uh, or the Chinese, uh, uh, the Chinese. Uh, I just, uh, I, but I'm sure that many of you can do it. And there are many details here. For instance, we have all the fluid structures and and them solvers and many other solvers. This is used to store the knowledge so that you will add incremental knowledge on that. But we start from the the knowledge also for this inter structure in interaction. And then there are many applications. I think I, I don't want to bother you with this. There are many applications about Python interfaces. I'll, I'll put it at the end of the lecture just in case I had to leave it with you. This is how, and there are many applications including in solids, in fluids. This is the embedded, embedded uh, applications that I, I didn't comment also for Okay, uh, I think this is the end. It's, but it's the particles, they are there as well. And many more. So this is the end. Uh, I will invite you to look at it. If you are interested in learning more details, if you want just to pilot the code, you can also use it. And I wish you good luck in your career. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for this impressive talk with many, many, many nice movies. I think a lot of us are jealous that you can really produce these things. So to start with some of the questions, it's like um, we're all doing simulations in biomedicine and we know that it's still a very, very evolving domain. So how, when with your experience in the industrial world, how mature is it in the industry and how many and how many places is it really used as a day-to-day -to -day tool? Well, um, I can tell you for, for what, for, for what I know. I know at mm, um, three or four groups in the world in, that are very active in this field. Uh, the group of Professor Lerner in George Mason University, they use it for the design of devices, particularly with uh, aneurysm. They, it has a, the, the probably the best collection of aneurysm simulated. Also, Professor Charles Taylor in, uh, in from Stanford, he has a company. The company is called? Hmm? Heartflow. Heartflow as well. Pianoji was one of the beginners in this field, so, and uh, he had made progress. Also, uh, for valve design, the, the group in the University of Aachen is very active. Uh, but this is what I know. Probably what I don't know is, is bigger than but that. If you talk about the non-medical applications, uh, how much is it used there, oh. actually? For the non-medical application, all the examples you have seen, they have been supported by industry, all of them. But is it something that they use on a daily basis, or is it something, like you say, like as an academic exercise? No, 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 no not academic, not so? academic. Uh, the oil industry, uh, before they actually design a well, they try to do simulation of how the, how the, the drill will, uh, will break the soil, it is used for design purposes. In the manufacturing sector, before you manufacture a product that has to be deformed, it's simulated because the manufacturing process is very expensive. So you, the, the virtual lab is almost a reality in the manufacturing sector. Sheet forming, casting, welding, additive manufacturing, they all use extensive simulation. So I think the biomedical sector is a bit behind, but it's coming, it's, 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 it's coming. Uh, particularly for device, for device design, for this. Uh, 
uh, how this, this device will behave, the questions, what if, what will happen if, also for prothesis design. And so I, I guess that we are converging to, uh, to make uh, these tools usable. And you showed some examples of failures of buildings and things like that. How reliable are currently these simulations? I always tell my students that nobody is going to pay you for anything that they know. So basically, we get many questions and requests for problems that are sensitive, and there's not an answer. You know, How long will this nuclear power live with this criteria? What is the death criteria? That the steel cables will lose 25% of the strength. And we tell them 10 more years or 25 more years. Uh, they have to believe it. But this is the same risk, you know, if you are an astronaut, uh, you, have, you, know, you take risk. <laughs> so I think that, uh, and there is a, a big, uh, I think this is the big uh, beauty of these methods. They are predictive. So you, what we do is we calibrate on problems that we know the answer, complex problems. We break things. We will break this. This is not expensive to break. And then we will really bet that the life that we are going to predict for this nuclear reactor is, 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 a, is a good one. We are analyzing now the Fukushima plant, the corium inside the plant. Corium is the, met, the metal that has been melted, the, the refrigerator, uh, the, the pipes, they have been melted, and they are uh, polluted with the nuclear. Uh, so there's no way to go there in, the, in many years. So they are doing simulation to guess where the corium pits are inside. So they can send a robot inside. So anyway. Very interesting. Any questions? Mm. Um, I already took your time, but. Uh, uh, Jerome has. Oh, Jerome. Hi. Okay. So thank you, Renio, for this great talk. Uh, I came a bit uh, late, unfortunately. So maybe some of my questions were already answered in, in your first slides. Uh, but that's. So uh, I have three questions. Uh, the first question I have is that, so when you, you start to apply uh, particles to, uh, particle methods to biological systems, uh, you're confronted to the great difficulty of defining uh, the laws uh, that, that, that will rule the interaction of the particles uh, among each other and uh, with the boundaries. And the common physical laws that are using in uh, civil engineering or in mechanical engineering uh, are basically failing. Mm. And so from your experience, can you comment on whether you already had to cope with this, uh, with this problem and, uh, in civil engineering or whether you are aware about people who could successfully validate models of particle interactions for biological uh, applications? This is the greatest challenge. Uh, I already mentioned at the beginning that uh, it's models are simple, but the interacting forces is the key. And these forces are different for every material. They have to be calibrated for any material. Different from cement, that's for, uh, for uh, clay, soil. Uh, and this refer both to the accumulation, then to the disgregation. So this is a challenge for every material that you want to model with particles. So it's, mm, and, and uh, and I, I'm not surprised that the civil engineering laws will fail because they are not two laws that are applied to each material. So the only answer is that we need extensive um, calibration uh, of the methods with, uh, with the experiments. Um, I will not, in fact, I cannot give any recommendation because uh, still we are fighting to, um, to, to calibrate these methods for uh, three different materials, which is uh, rock, uh, cement, which is uh, paste, basically, and concrete, um, and, 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 and some clays. Uh, I think that the, 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 the perhaps the human body will be more like, uh, like in soil mechanics, more softer materials. But uh, so there is a future there ahead. And, and so, so following on that, following on that discussions, uh, so can can this solver uh, admit uh, changes along time of of particle interaction, uh, particle interaction rules? depending, for example, on fluid velocities, on uh, uh, instantaneous uh, fluid viscosity, mm -hmm. and so on? Or, or would it generate uh, conservation problems? No, I don't think so. I think, well, 
I don't like to say that there will not be no problems, but uh, the loss, the friction loss could be, uh, you could define in, uh, the, the as a function of time, you know. Uh, mm, I don't see any, any mechanical problem in that. Uh, in fact, uh, sometimes they are activated when they, the particles hit the walls, you know, and, and if not, they are switched off. So the friction loss could be re redefined or activated during the, during the transient solution. Yes, they can. And I'll jump to my last question, so if, if I can. <laughs> uh, so if, if you take an extreme case of, uh, of Lagrangian solid and of Lagrangian or earlier uh, fluid, so with, uh, let's say, 20% of volume uh, of particles and uh, cohesive particles, uh, are you able to simulate uh, pro-elastic phenomena like soil consolidation or of course, I'm thinking about tissue consolidation. I think so. This is the this is a target now. This is a target to model uh, to model uh, porous material with fluid inside um, using these methods, and also with the formable particles, with the formable particles. But um, this line is uh, is very new. This is all very new. The particle world is mature, not mature, but it's very popular in communities like chemical engineering, for instance. It's amazing. The, or in mining, for the mining industry, or even um, uh, chemical engineering is the root of the, of the, of the of, uh, embedded methods in particle. Mm -hmm. But now, uh, pharmacy, food, uh, and, on, and, and many other industrial uh, uh, companies uh, or sectors are applying the particle method. In soil mechanics and in civil engineering, uh, it's relatively new. New theses are being finished these days to, uh, on the topic. Uh, so it's uh, and this marriage of continuum fluid and particles is also new. So, uh, for instance, we have uh, had 150 PhD theses in Thymne, and only three or four on particle methods in, in the last three or four years. So it's new. So we will see many more of that in the future. Also because you need to have a tool that, that can really make you easy the life of the mechanics of the three fields involved. Uh, and you see in our community, at least in civil engineering, people work more, used to work in vertical lines. Soil mechanics, they have their own codes, you know, and they are not so much, they don't master so well the, the fluid part, or, and the fluid part, they don't so now, we need these transverse teams. But it's, go, it's in the going in the, this direction, also for funding. <laughs> um, th thank you so much for the very nice talk. Um, I So sometimes when we try to build models in biomedicine and specifically models from imaging data, uh, what happens is that we have, sometimes we don't have all the data that the model needs for boundary condition but also sometimes we have much more data that the model perhaps doesn't need. No? And an example is, say we want to model intraventricular flow, and we actually have measurements of velocity inside the domain, like uh, from an image, for example, of velocities. Mm -hmm. uh, so when I work with modelers, they normally say, no, no, but just give me the inlet and the outlet. Mm -hmm. And then I'm, I do the model. No? So if I want to actually give more data, um, they just cannot put it into the model. No? And I was wondering whether do you think that there is um, a way wha how these um, um, modeling paradigms can accommodate for this sparsely localized data, not necessarily at the boundaries? And if perhaps it's the particle uh, framework that will allow to just give properties to particles inside the domain? It will, it will, it will. It will, it will show you some inconsistencies somehow if, the, if there is an error in the inlet or the outlet. You could uh, actually use the the inside information to predict the inlet and the outlet, yeah? and see if this uh, really corresponds to what you expected. So this is there is never too much information. I'm, you are very lucky to have all that information. <laughs> How to use it? Well, yes, uh, to your advantage. But this information will be very useful. Very useful. Okay. What is difficult will be to match to, to, to all the the inlet, the outlet, and the inside information consistent. But this is the target. So you probably can define an optimization problem where you have to minimize the error between the inlet, the outlet, and the inside field. This is an interesting problem. Yeah. Okay, thanks. 
And if you have like a pure solid mechanics problem, do you see any advantages of particles or is it just... Uh, yes, when you have multifracture, for instance, in explosion. Let's say you have a, com unfortunately, in, in, in uh, well, in explosions, for instance, in civil engineering, we use explosions in rock mechanics, in, in for tunneling. But let's say you have a concrete block. This is for security. Well, security is now a part of the HP 2020. So uh, <laughs> you want to uh, see the effect of an explosion for an accident or human induced, it's called, on, on the wall of a bay of a aircraft structure. So you have initially a solid, which is a concrete uh, block. You put inside a charge, explodes, generates 2,000 particles of different size, and these particles uh, really interact with the structures. So this is particle to solid interaction. These are the kinds of problems. Industrially, is explosion is uh, uh, for the um, for the construction industry, tunneling or um, queries, can canteras, and for security, unfortunately, for security and defense. Any other questions? Sorry, I took all the time of the best day. No, well, why no, gain no, the time? Why recover? Absolutely, perfectly in time. So thank you very much again. Thank you. Thank you.